Welcome to the Faith Lift Radio Podcast, where doubt is destroyed and your faith is lifted. Here's today's message from Dr. Glenn. All right, uh, let's bow our head and let's pray. Father, we want to thank you for the word of the living God. Spirit of God, I'm asking today that you will think through my mind and that you will speak through my lips. Thank you for these, your wonderful people. They've got ears to hear, mind to understand, and heart to receive the word of the living God. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. All right, let's open our Biblions, please, to the book of Luke chapter... 18, Luke, the 18th chapter. And I want to talk to you today about the power of persevering in prayer or reasons why you must persevere in prayer. Now, in the last 20 or 30 years, we, the church world, have reduced uh, prayer only to a level of confession. Now, you know, I'm a great, I'm a faith man. I believe in confession. I teach confession. But if you only limit prayer to confession and you take it away from the realm of supplication, intercession, then you're taking away the cutting edge out of prayer. So, yes, there is an aspect of confession. Very important to maintain that. But we cannot do that at the expense of uh, supplication, and we cannot do that at the expense of intercession. So our prayers should consist of supplication, intercession, petition, confession, and so forth, and so on. Can you say amen? Praise God forevermore. We give God praise. So I want to talk to you today about reasons why you must persevere. And then unfortunately, a lot of uh, churches, even Word of Faith churches, do not know how to persevere in prayer because uh, you, we, we were told that if you pray about a situation more than one time, then it is unbelief. Well, that is not the case because Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane three times about the same thing. So we cannot ascribe unbelief to Jesus. Uh, the great prophet Elijah prayed about the same situation seven times. Are you listening to me now? So we cannot ascribe unbelief to the great prophet Elijah. So this is why I want to talk to you today and get you back on the rail of to persevering in prayer. Can you say amen? I want to read Luke chapter 18. And of course, I'm going to begin with the King James, and I'm going to read from different translations of the Bible, okay? It says, and he spake, verse 1, and he spake a parable. Now, remember the Greek word parable, parabolos. It means to throw alongside. So he takes something, he takes a natural story to throw it alongside to show you a heavenly reality. All right. So, and he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. So lift up your hands with me right now and say with me, I must always pray and not faint. Say it again. I must always pray and not faint. Praise God. Now, let me read that to you from the um, uh, contemporary English version, all right? The CEV, the contemporary English version, and then I'm going to read to you from the Living Bible. All right, it says, uh, uh, the, the CEV, Jesus told his disciples a story how they should keep on praying and never give up. Jesus told them a story about how they should keep on praying and never give up. So lift up your hands right now and say with me, I will keep on praying and never give up. Now, let me read that to you from the Living Bible. All right. The Living Bible says, One day, Jesus told his disciples a story to illustrate their need for constant prayer 
and to show them that they must keep praying until the answer comes. Ma, ma, ma. Did you hear that? Let's all read that verse together. Thank you, Miss Bonnie, for putting this on, online for us right now. Let's everybody read that verse together, please. Ready? One, two, go. Ready? One, two, go. Jesus, one day Jesus told his disciples a story, praise God, amen, to illustrate their need for what? Constant prayer and to show them that they must keep praying until the answer come. So do me a favor and say with me, I must keep praying until the answer come. I must keep praying until the answer comes. Or let's say it this way, I must keep praying until the answer manifests. All right? Or I must keep praying until the answer materializes. Are you listening to me now? All right? So, what was the story? Well, what was the story, ladies and gentlemen? Let's read that. If, if Miss Bonnie, if you can put that um, uh, from the Living Bible for me, please. Verse 2 onwards. We're going to read verse 2 till verse 8. And I want to show you today that you can't just use this statement and make it up applicable to all aspects of prayer. So when you were told if you pray more than one time about the situation, it is unbelief, that is not entirely correct. Are you listening to me now? Because we discovered in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus prayed about the same situation three times. Are you listening to me? All right? So th that's what happens when you try to fit everything into one. They will, and they will tell you it's the prayer of faith. Ladies and gentlemen, look at me. Let me just burst that bubble right now. All prayers are prayers of faith. Whether it is the prayer of binding and losing, whether it is the prayer of intercession, whether it is the prayer of petition, whether it is the prayer of supplication. Are you listening now? Amen. All prayers, whether it is the prayer of agreement, the prayer of consecration, all prayers to be in order for them to be effective, they've got to be done on the foundation of faith. Without faith, nothing works. Are you hearing me, saints? Praise the Lord. All right, now let's read. I'm going to read that. Thank you, Miss Bonnie. Praise be to Jesus. Luke chapter 18, we're going to read from verse 2 to verse 8. There was a, a city judge. I want you please to underline that. He said, a very God, uh, he said, a very godless man who had great contempt for everyone. A widow of that city came to him frequently to appeal for justice. I want you to underline the word justice against a man who had harmed her. The judge ignored her for a while, but eventually she got on his nerve. May you get on the devil's nerves. Amen. He said, I fear neither God nor man. He said to himself, but this woman bothers me. I'm going to see that she gets justice, for she's wearing me out with her constant coming. Then the Lord said, if even an evil judge can be worn down like that, don't you think that God will surely give justice to his people who plead with him day and night? Come on, say with me, I will get justice. Justice will be served as I seek God day and night. Come on, say with me, justice will be served as I seek God day and night. And this is the purpose of prayer. The purpose of prayer is for you to obtain justice. Can you say amen? If you feel, you, if you have have a sense of injustice right now, I need you to understand, ladies and gentlemen, as you pray, justice will be given unto you. Can you say amen? Let's go to Psalm 6, uh, let's go to Isaiah 62, Isaiah 62, please. Praise God. And then we're going to look at uh, verse, we're going to look at verse 1, and then we're going to look at verse 6 and verse 7. Oh, I'm going to give you at least eight reasons today why you must persevere in prayer. For Zion's sake, Zion is not only talking about Israel, all right, but it's talking about us, the church. So for the church's sake, will I not hold my peace? In other words, I will not be shut up, all right, 
And for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof as the lamp that burneth. Now, let's come down to verse 6. I have set watchmen. Now, by the word watchmen, write the word intercessors. I have set intercessors upon your walls, O Jerusalem, we shall never hold their peace day nor night. Now connect that with Luke 18. Shall not God avenge his elect who cried day and night unto him? All right. All right. Who shall never hold their peace day nor night? Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence and give him no rest. Give God no rest. Until he establishes you, until he makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. So don't give God any rest until he establishes you and until he makes Jerusalem, until he makes Bonnie, until he makes Joel, until he makes Sabida, until he makes Catherine, until he makes Bianca, until he makes Stephanie. Are you hearing me, saints? Until he makes Catherine and whoever else is watching, uh, uh, Marie Chaperon, amen, until he makes Bill McGill a praise in the earth or until he makes your ministry, your business, a praise in the earth. Can you say amen? So this is why we've got to persevere in prayer. And did the Apostle Paul believe in persevering prayer? You better believe that. Let's go to the book of uh, Romans, please. Romans in chapter 15. Romans in chapter 15, please. Look in your biblicals, and we're going to read from verse 30. Romans in chapter 15, verse 30 until verse 32. Now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake and for the love of the Spirit, that you strive together with me. That you what now? Strive together with me. All right. In your prayers to God for me. Now circle the word strive together. And what is that Greek word? I want you to write this down. The Greek word here is the word sun agonizomai. S-U-N-A-G-O-N-I-Z-O-M-A-I. Sun agonizomai, which is a compound of two words, synchronize, sin, sun, from which you get the word synchronize, and agonizomai, which, from which you get the word agonize. So he says, let's synchronize our agonizing in prayer. Are you listening? Let us synchronize our agonizing together in prayer. So he's talking about here corporate prayer. Amen. You can agonize just like Jesus did in the Garden of Gethsemane. He agonized by himself because his disciples were too busy sleeping. But when you get a church, when you can get a family to synchronize their agony in prayer, Great things going to happen. Praise God. Can you say amen? Can you say hallelujah? Praise the Lord. All right. So he says that you strive together with me in prayers. Not, look at the word prayers is plural. This is not just praying one time. This is continuous, constant praying. Are you hearing me, saints? Continuous, constant, persevering prayers together with me and for me. Why? Verse 31, that I may be delivered. So I understand this, ladies and gentlemen, when we synchronize our agonizing together in prayer, it will bring deliverance. So say this with me. Prayer brings deliverance. Prayer brings deliverance. Can you say amen? Um, that I may be delivered from them that do not believe in Judea, and that my service, and by the word service, write the word ministry, which I have for Jerusalem may be accepted of the saints. Number two, when you pray together, when you agonize in prayer, and you give time, stretch of time, to praying in the Spirit, your ministry, your service, will be accepted. Just because you start a church or ministry doesn't mean it's going to be accepted. 
So number one, prayer brings deliverance. Number two, prayer makes your ministry acceptable. Prayer makes your ministry acceptable. All right. Number three, he says, that I may come unto you with joy by the will of God. So number three, write this down. Prayer triggers joy. Prayer triggers joy. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. That's what Jesus said. All right. That I may come with you with joy. Number three, prayer triggers joy. Number four, that I may come to you by the will of God. What does that mean? That means the will of God is not automatic. The will of God is not automatic. Some of you are waiting for the will of God to just happen automatically. No. If there was no enemy, then the will of God would just happen without any hindrances. But there are hindrances to the will of God. This is why when you go to the book of Nehemiah, let's go to the book of Nehemiah, please. Praise the Lord. We're going to look at chapter 4. It was the will of God for him to build the wall. Nehemiah chapter 4. We're going to read verse 7 till verse 9. And it came to pass that when Sanballat and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up, that the breach breaches began to be stopped, that they were very angry. Don't think because you start your church, everybody's happy about that. No, not everybody's happy about that. And what, look at what happened in verse 8. And they conspired all of them together. Do you realize right now that there is a conspiracy against you? against your ministry, against your business, against your life. You may not be aware of it, but right now there is an evil conspiracy and they conspired all of them together to come and to fight against Jerusalem or against Bonnie or against Catherine or against Sabita or against uh, uh, Stephanie. So something. The, right now there is an evil conspiracy against you. All right? To hinder you, verse 9, nevertheless, we made our prayer. Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God, and we set a watch. We set a watch against them, what? Day and night. Day and night. Day and night. And if we want to see revival, we've got to get back to praying day and night. Did you hear what I said to you? If you want revival, you got to get back. The church in America needs to get back to its knees. We need to get back to praying day and night until God establishes us. Can you say amen? Let's go to Colossians chapter 4 and verse 12. Colossians chapter 4 and verse 12 says, Epaphras, who is one of you? Epaphras, who is one of you of the Colossians church, a servant of Christ, saluteth you always laboring fervently for you in prayers that you may stand complete in all the will of God. Can you say amen? The will of God is not going to happen automatically. It has to be labored fervently in prayers. And that's what Paul just revealed to us. Can you say amen? The will of God for America is not just going to happen because some prophets are prophesying. Listen, prophecies without prayer, write this down, please. Prophecies without prayer is pointless. A prophecy that is not prayed through, are you listening, is pointless because it will not manifest. There was a prophetic word about Israel coming out of captivity after seven years. Daniel read it. He had to pray through. Are you listening? Paul said to Timothy, according to the prophecies which went on before your life, that you by them might do good warfare. So you have to pray through. A prophetic word without prayer will stagnate. A prophetic word without prayer Write this down, please. Don't forget this. Don't forget this. Somebody might want to write this down in the margin. 
A prophetic word without prayer will constantly be post postponed. Oh, I hope that hits you in the belly. A prophetic word. What is a prophetic word? A promise of God without prayer will be postponed. Let that sink in to your spirit and into your mind right now. A prophetic word, a promise of God without prayer the enemy will postpone it. He will delay it. Why? Because it was not drawn from the realm of the spirit to the realm of the natural. Are you listening to me now? Can you say amen? So this is why we have to get involved. Tears, tongues, and travailing. Say that with me, please. Say this with me this way. Say tongues, tears, and travailing. Tongues, tears, and travailings. Is what will take your prophetic word and make it materialize. Are you listening? <clears throat> it takes... Why don't you write this down, please? It takes persistence in prayer to break the resistance of the devil. Let me see it again. It takes persistence in prayer to break the resistance of the devil. Persistence breaks resistance. Can you say amen? So, let's give you today real quickly, and tomorrow, don't miss prayer coach. We're going, to pray, we're going to be praying together, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. We're going to be worshiping and praying together to see God's will established in your life. So, why must you persevere in prayer? Number one, you must persevere in prayer to break delay to your answer. You must persevere in prayer to break the spirit of delay to your answer. That judge, that unjust judge was delaying this woman's answer. Right? Let's go back to Luke, please, 18. He was delaying this woman's answer. But she kept persisting to break the delay. She wore him out. She wore him out. And then the Bible says, look what Jesus said. Verse 7 and verse 8. Let's go back to Luke 18, verse 7 and verse 8. Luke 18, verse 7 and verse 8. Shall not God avenge or give justice to his own elect, praise God, which cries day and night, amen, unto him, though he be long with them, I tell you that he will avenge them, what? Speedily, speedily. So persevering prayer breaks the spirit of delay. Can you say that with me, please? The, the persevering in prayer Amen. Uh, breaks the spirit of delay and bring the answer speedily. Amen. 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 Praise God. Number two, write this down, please. So you, 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 you have to break that. You have to break the spirit of delay. Number two, number two, you persevere in prayer. When there are opposing forces that seem that seem to be unsurmountable, and victory seems lost, you've got to persist in prayer, persevere in prayer. When there are evil forces that look like 
unsurmountable for you and victory seems lost. No, 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 no. Victory is never lost. Victory is at the end of your prayer. Can you say amen? So, Acts chapter 12, Acts chapter 12, we see that in uh, Peter's case. Acts chapter 12, please, ladies and gentlemen. Look in your biblicals, Acts chapter 12. The Bible says that uh, James was decapitated and by Herod, and now he goes after Peter. Are you listening? And so, what does the Bible say? Well, look at verse uh, verse 5. Acts 12, verse 5 says, Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing. Persevering prayer was made without ceasing. Now, I need you to underline the word uh, without ceasing. That's the Greek word, ektenos, E-K-T-E-N-O-S. And ektenos, ladies and gentlemen, from which we get the English word extended. All right, extended. Now, once you write this down, it is, in Greek, it means protracted time in prayer. Protracted time in prayer. Can you say amen? All right, extended. The word ektenos means to be, it is extended and outstretch, extended and outstretched time in prayer. It is protracted time in prayer. Write this down, please. Protracted time in prayer bring supernatural protection. Say that with me, please. Protracted time in prayer bring about supernatural protection. And you can't do that without bringing the Holy Ghost. You can't do that without praying in tongues. So this ectanos prayer, I want you to write this down, ectanos prayer can only be done by tongues. Are you hearing me, saints? So, you pray and persevere in prayer when opposing evil forces have come against you and it seems unsurm unsurmountable, the, uh, that, that force seems unsurmountable, and victory seems lost, but as you persevere in prayer, miracles will take place. Can you say amen? Can you say amen? Praise God forevermore. So that's number two. Number three, once you write this down, number three, why should you persevere in prayer? Reason number three, to break the demonic cords and the weapons of of mass destructions that has been that have been formed against you. You have, amen, to persevere in prayer to break the demonic cords. Are you listening to me now? I want you, I want to show you a verse uh, um, in the book of. Um, you should. I've, I've shown you before. Um, in the book of Isaiah, please let's go to the book of Isaiah. Thank. I believe it's Isaiah twenty-eight. If I'm not mistaken, praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Isaiah 49, please. Isaiah 49. It's not Isaiah. It is not Isaiah 28, but Isaiah 49. Look in your Bible, please, ladies and gentlemen. Isaiah 49. One of the greatest verses in your Bible that you can connect with the New Testament of what Jesus said. All right, praise God. Isaiah 49, we're going to read verse 24. Isaiah 29, 49, verse 24. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty? Now, the Greek text says, or the Hebrew text says, and the French Bible says, shall the prey be taken from the strong man? You see that now? Shall the prey be taken from the strong man? Think about the prey as your loved one, as your son, your daughter, your next door neighbor. Your work colleague shall the prey be taken from the, the from the strong man, or the lawful captive be delivered? And there saith the Lord, even the captives of the mighty of the strong man shall be taken away. Well, how do you do that? Well, you got to bind the strong man. 
Well, how do you bind a strong man? You do so by prayer, by by engaging the prayer of binding and loosing. Can you say amen? Praise God. All right. But thus saith the Lord, even the captives of the mighty or the strong man shall be taken away and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered for I will contend with him that contendeth with thee and I will save your children. Praise God. This is why you must persevere in prayer. Can you say amen, ladies and gentlemen? Glory be to God. To break demonic cords, to break the principalities over your city. To break the principalities and powers, evil powers, over your church. Are you hearing me say? Let me give you a few more today. Number four, write this down, please. For the reason why you should, and you as pastor, get your church to develop a strong prayer base. A church is only as strong as its prayer base, not as its preaching base. And you got to hear that. Because in America and in a lot of nations today, we're putting a lot of emphasis on eloquence in preaching. It's not eloquence in preaching that brings revival. I want you to write, I want you to write this down. And never forget this. No revival in of in any nation has ever been triggered without prayer. It takes united prayer. So you just this is why every pastor must develop a strong prayer base. Every ministry must have a strong prayer prayer base, especially when we're talking about praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in the Spirit, it's very important. Can you say amen? And so why do we do that? For the will of God to be established in our lives, in our churches, in our nations. Going back to the book of Colossians, Colossians chapter 4, and every church needs an Epaphras. Every church needs an Epaphras, Colossians chapter 4. You know, if the Lord was to tell me to stop preaching, it wouldn't bother me one lick. What I would do then is to position myself as an Epaphras. Because I can get more done in prayer than I can do in preaching. Some of you can't believe that. No, we can get more done in praying than we can do in preaching. Now, preaching is important. All right. <clears throat> but you can get a whole lot more done in praying. In fact, preaching without the base of prayer is nothing but motivational speaking. Colossians chapter 4, please. And let's read verse 12. He says, Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, saluteth you, always laboring fervently for you in prayers. Why? That you, Colossian church, may stand perfect, matured, and complete in all the will of God. So we've got to pray and persevere in prayer for the will of God to be established in our lives, in our churches, and our nation. There is nothing automatic. Are you hearing me, saints? Number five, why should you persevere in prayer? Why should you persevere in prayer? You should persevere in prayer in order for Christ to be formed in you and, and our loved ones and for salvation to be a reality in their lives. And you will see that in Galatians chapter 4 and verse 19. Galatians chapter 4 and verse 19. The Bible is very clear. He tells us, Paul says, My little children of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. Do you remember when Jesus took Peter, James, and John on the Mount of Transfiguration to pray, but they were not praying? The Bible says, and as, the Bible says, and as he prayed, should have said, as they prayed, but they were sleeping. It says, as he prayed, the form of his visage was changed and his clothes became white and glistering, the King James Bible says. Prayer changes you. Prayer will form Christ inside of you. And when you pray 
and you persevere in prayer, it will form Christ inside the church, inside the believers. How many times you go to church and you see it and when you look at the state of the church, uh, the people are very carnal, carnal people. Division, strife, fightings, quarrelings, jealousies, and veins. Ladies and gentlemen, that's because Christ is not formed inside of them. Well, how is Christ going to be formed inside of them? It's going to take you and I, as the Apostle Paul and Epaphras, to get ourselves on our knees and our faces and begin to pray that Christ will be formed in them. You don't just pray them through into the kingdom. You pray them inside that Christ will be formed inside of them. So we must pray that number five for Christ to be formed in our loved ones. Can you say amen? Number six, and I'm going to close right here today. Number six, why should we persevere in prayer? And that's the key to them all. You pray and persevere in prayer, ladies and gentlemen, because that is the key to revival. If you want revival in your ministry, if you want to be a catalyst for revival in your neighborhood, in your state, in your nation, you've got to pray. This is why we put a lot of emphasis in our ministry on prayer. If you get involved in this ministry, you will pray. You will pray. Got up 6 o'clock in the morning before this morning. Amen. Got up early morning to pray at 6 a.m. After that, we got prayers. We, got, we have prayer in every day, almost every day. What are we doing when we're praying? We're filling up our clouds. Glory be to God. And if the clouds be full, they will empty themselves. You can't have revival if your clouds are are not full of prayer. When the incense will go up, fire will come down. Can you say amen? When the incense will go up, the fire will come down. We used to wonder about the old timers. They used to sing, send the fire, Lord, send the fire down, send the fire down. Well, that is Holy Ghost by, uh, backed up in the Bible. Well, you, the fire cannot come down if prayers are not going down, if prayers are not going up. Are you hearing me, saints? For the fire to come down, prayers first have got to go up. On the day of Pentecost, 10 days before the day of Pentecost, these people were all in one accord and they were praying. Doing what? Filling up their clouds. And then it came down as fire from heaven. Can you say amen? This is why we must pray in the Holy Ghost. So we pray, ladies and gentlemen, number six, we persevere in prayer because that's the key to revival. And I don't know about you, but God has sent me to be a catalyst, amen, of revival. And that is what our ministry is all about. It's about bringing revival into the different churches. I'm here to set you on fire. I can't set you on fire first if I don't light up your fire, your prayer life. My job is to light up your prayer life. My job is to light up your faith. This is this is my threefold uh, 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 calling that God has put upon me, is to light you up in prayer, to light up your faith, and to light you up in the Word. You hear me now? My job is to light you up in the uh, in prayer. Amen. The fire of prayer light you up uh, in your faith and light up your light you up in the Word. Can you say Amen? Can you say Praise the Lord? Glory be to God. Well, that's enough for today. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Faith Lift Radio Podcast. For more information about Dr. Glenn and how to offer your financial support, log on to glenarecchia.org. 